Times Dead with you again. How are you today? All well, I hope. Well, I'm coming to you from a sunny Victoria, Australia. What I thought we'd do today is spend some time planting seeds for the new season. Um, winter being our new season here. So what am I going to sow? Well I've just been going through my seeds and there's a couple here that I don't have such as the um, sugar snap pea which I have to get but I do have a few others. Now I've got the leafless pea um, obviously it is a pea with no leaves it's just got those spindly things and I got that just as a bit of novelty because I could <laughs> so I've got a few here and I want to keep them going so I'll dedicate a little patch to these ones and let them breed up a bit and yeah they're interesting I thought well the grubs can't get these because there's nothing for them to eat then I have the golden potted pea and that's where you all the pods are a nice golden colour bit of a contrast to the green who said a garden, a vegetable garden can't be pretty? <laughs> so, we've got these ones. Then we have the Frank's pea. Now this is a lovely pea. It is a, a uh, like a sugar snap. But it has beautiful purple flowers. So I quite like this one, and that's the Frank's pea. Then we have um, the purple snow peas, a little bit different to the green ones. So I thought, well, there's a nice change for you. I can have a mixture of both green, purple, and yellow. I'll have psychedelic peas. <laughs> Then we have the dwarf shelling peas. Now these are a pea that only the bush only grows to like about nine or twelve inches tall. It's only a very small bush, but it is quite prolific. So I thought, well, these would be good in the pods. Um, I don't have to search up real high to be looking for them and it's a nice little shelling pea. Uh, then we have some more of the melting mammoth snow peas so I'll find somewhere in the garden for them. And then we have a green feast, the normal green feast that um, <clears throat> that you have at Bunnings or supermarkets or wherever. They usually sell the Green Feast and they're a shelling pea. And then I've got a mixture. I don't know what they are. Um, I obviously thought I knew what they were going to be when I put them in the bag but I can't remember. So they are what they are and they'll get planted out. I'll sort it out then. <laughs> so there's the peas that I'll be planting. Then I've got <coughs> some um, purple, sweet purple asparagus. So I'm going to pull down my large pond outside 
that's down near the Chook Pen this year. It gets a lot of uh, a lot of that green slime and muck from the neighbours' trees and things like that. So I'm going to pull it down. It's in a good sunny spot. It's already raised. Um, so I'm going to plant it up with asparagus. I've, I've got nowhere for me asparagus this year. I tried planting it down in the orchard in between the fruit trees because that's where you're supposed to plant asparagus. It's nice deep rooted, it brings up all the nutrients, but it's just not doing any good. Between the chooks, the snails and the weeds, it doesn't have a hope. So this way, if it's raised up and over there, I can get to it, weed it, and it'll be um, be done. So what is asparagus that I've got? Uh, they are four-year-old crowns. So I'll be able to... Um, I'll give them this year to sort of settle in and next year I'll be able to start taking crops from them. These ones here, it'll be four or five years before I can get a crop out of these. But they'll be nice when I do. Onions. Yeah, I know, it's getting a little late, but better than never. I have Sweet Dominica um, is a huge flat round bulb with light brown skin. The layers are crisp, succulent and juicy, making this the perfect choice for salads and stir fries. So that'll be very nice. Then I have Gladolin White, which is a nice salad onion. I have a good brown onion. These are my own seeds, so lots of these ones. So that'll be nice. Then I have um, the onion giant onion Alyssa Craig. So I'll be trying some of these this year. I did try them last year but they never took so I'll give them another go. And these ones are the red bunching onion. It's sort of like a, a red spring onion. So that'll be nice. For lettuce uh, we have the Australian yellow leaf, which is a, a nice lettuce. Um, it's a nice crisp lettuce, but it's, it doesn't have that real crunch like um, iceberg has. Um, but it is a nice salad lettuce, so it'll be nice. Then we have a gourmet mixed lettuce lot and it has just all sorts in it. What I'll take from these, I'll, I'll over sow a little bit and I'll take out individual lettuces and let them grow on in pots. They, they won't be cut and come again. Well, most of them will be cut and come again, but some of them I will grow into full lettuces and um, I'll also save seed from these. I do actually have a whole heap of seed that I saved and do you think I can find it? Mm -mm. Don't know where it's gone. I'll probably find it after I don't need it anymore. 
So, then we have nasturtiums. Can't have a garden without nasturtiums. These are good. You can eat the leaves. You can eat the flowers. They have a nice peppery taste. They're great for salads and that. Also to help brighten and cheer it up. They're also a very good catch crop for your um, caterpillar butterfly um, and all your other grubs and things like that. They do like nasturtiums and they'll go to these rather than your crops. But if they've only got your crops to eat, that's what they'll eat. So good catch crop. Then we have Lunaria. Lunaria is like a, a miniature snapdragon. It's a very pretty, very dainty little plant. And uh, this is called Fairy Bouquet. And I do like Lunaria. It's such a pretty little flower. Then we have Nemesia Carnival Mix. Now these are lovely once again. Um, these are sort of a cross between a snapdragon and a petunia. <laughs> it's about the best way I can describe them. Um, they're quite prolific as in they will self-seed and um, the bees love them, so a nice little flower. And then we have something for the pussy cats. We have catnip. <laughs> so I have already planted some, but I don't think it took. So I'm going to have another go at seeing if I can propagate some catnip and see how my little pussy cats like it because I plan on planting it up in the uh, fernery and seeing if they enjoy it. So let's get out into the garden and do a bit of planting. Oh, g'day everybody. I'm just uh, sorting out some seeds. So, I've been back to Bunnings. You know how I said I needed some sugar snap peas? Well, I got me sugar snaps. So I plan on planting them today. Uh, I also picked up some Charters Double Mixed Hollyhock. Now I do have some Hollyhock around the place, mainly uh, pinks, different shades of pink, even up to a really dark, almost black. But in this one it has whites, apricots and yellows as well as a really vibrant red as well. So I thought they'd be really nice around the garden. Some nice tall plants to give the, the garden a bit of structure and a bit of height. And because they self-seed every year and I won't have to worry about buying the packet ever again because I'll probably have hundreds of them coming up but anyway that's all right they're a nice plant then we have some gypsphilia bright rose which is a beautiful pink color so I do have some gypsphilia white which I usually plant out 
in the garden, um, mainly in amongst my brassicas uh, because it helps to trick the white butterfly moth into thinking that there's other butterflies already around it and as you wouldn't believe it but butterflies can be very territorial especially the white butterfly moth and if it thinks there's heaps of other butterflies around it and if you give it something else to lay its eggs on like uh, nasturtium or something like that Remember I was saying it's a good catch crop? They'll go to the nasturtium and they'll leave your brassicas alone. So I also picked up some red pack joy. Uh, there we go. Sorry about the quality but It is what it is. Um, then we have some <laughs> some lettuce, some butter crunch lettuce. Now these are really nice, the butter crunch. Um, they're a nice, soft, crisp lettuce. They're not like the, the hard crispiness of a lettuce, but they're really nice in your salads. You've got a good flavour to them too. So, nice butter crunch. Then we have the All Year Rounder, which is in a seed tape. I haven't had much luck with seed tapes, but I thought I'd give it a go. It's Apparently pretty easy to um, to germinate these ones. It says uh, so late winter to autumn. I know it's not quite winter yet, but it'll do. And then we have lettuce Great Lakes, which is a crisp and crunchy iceberg type. So that's that one there. That's normally what you get in the supermarket. You know, the nice big heads of lettuce. So, and as I said, um, I'm planting my heading lettuce over with my garlic. And um, I'm hope and plus I'll put some gypsphilia through there. So hopefully that will keep the butterflies away and it'll be too cold for them shortly so they'll uh, go into hibernation or go wherever butterflies go during the really cold weather and uh, the peas and the garlic should help protect it then <laughs> You know what I found? My lettuces that I lost. Remember I said when I go and buy some more, I'll probably find the packet of lettuce that all my seeds are in. And guess what I found? <laughs> Never mind. Ah. So, what I also have is some bulbs that I forgot that I had and they're sprouting all through the place. So, these are just basically some winter gladiolis. So, I'll find somewhere nice for them. Put them in a pot somewhere. Um, what I've also got is two spinach, uh, the Popeye spinach. So these have been actually sitting in my pond for a couple of weeks. You know, the top layer of the sand part where the pond is. Yeah. 
so I'll plant them out and I also have some um, rainbow mix Swiss chard with all the different colours the reds, the yellows, the whites all that so it's time to plant up some new Swiss chard um, the other one that I had was probably about three years old so it came out and went to the chooks um, also something that I grabbed is these paint stirrers now I thought these would be really good for making plant labels all I will do is put a bit of that some uh, yellow tape around it or even that white webbing tape that I have that I um, did the pantry with I've got some of that left over and then I'll just use a marker pen and uh, mark my plants this is my this is not just for your little bits and pieces this is mainly for um, my plants that I keep for three, four and five years such as my peppers I usually keep my peppers for about four or five years so this way I can actually put a, a plant label in and hopefully I'll be able to distinguish what they are Um, I also picked up some more plant labels for when I'm putting in my plants and also some of this frog tape now frog tape and it's in a container so it won't get wet it can be left out in the potting station without fear of it getting drowned like the other um, painters tape that I had so this here what I do is that wide part I just put a piece of frog tape on it right on whatever it is and then when it comes to changing the label um, I can easy rip off the tape or if it won't come off stick on a new piece and I can use the label over and over and over and over again and I also picked up a couple of new hanging pots so I've got a few things to do that'll give me a few chores but at the moment I'm just going to plant out some of the plants that I have plus I've still got a few others in there that need to go into pots very shortly and up on my pot stand um, so that all my herbs and that are close to the kitchen door so I can just run out and grab herbs when I need to so what we will do is start planting the spinach what I have here is um, the sorrel red leaf sorrel now that I won't be pulling out I have a few weeds in here not many So uh, we'll get rid of those.
These scraps can just go into the chooks. Done. Now all we need to do is water that in, put a little bit of mulch over the top. But first of all, I'm going to find a packet of peas to be grown up along the back there. Right, and for this one, I will be planting the few leafless um, pods that I have. So make a drill. And just put them along. Make sure they're all tucked in the bed. And go with the next one. Tuck them into bed. There we 
go. Now they'll be watered in and mulched when I go round and mulch everything else. So we'll move on to planting the silver beet.
Okay, so we have planted the butter crunch lettuce and the Great Lakes lettuce. Now we will plant the uh, all year lettuce. This is the seed tape one and that's what you get. Okay. So we'll just tear that in half. And now I can either plant this straight into the ground or into these little containers, which is what I plan on doing for this one. like toilet paper actually you want to wipe your bum with that you don't know what will come sprouting out and sprinkle some dirt over the top well actually this is uh, the Koya medium so seeds don't need a great lot of um, fertiliser or anything like that. They've got it all in the seed at the moment. So all you need is a bit of growing medium and some water. And uh, once they start growing, then you can start, well, you can put them into a pot with a little bit of um, fertilizer in it such as seed raising mix or um, you can start fertilizing if they're in a larger pot you're better off with a small one to begin with and there's our label And this is one of them uh, paint pens or paint marker. I find it's quite good. So, all year. And the date, which is the 4th of the 11th. There we go. There's our lettuce planted. Don't you fall over. You stay in there, you. Right. Now, we want some pak choy. And what pot have we got? him down like brassica seeds these are 
so I'm going to be repotted anyway so I'm just going to stick a few in each little cell here and stick the rest back and back in the packet right now we'll top up with a bit more potting mix or seed medium whatever you want to call it there we go now Normally it works better than this. This one's getting down a bit, so time to go and buy a new pen, I think. I only have this in one place and I don't go there very often. it in the side there. That's better. Now we have the hollyhocks. Now these are a somewhat larger seed, so I'll be putting them in a larger trays, but I will be repotting on once they they come up, and once again I will most likely multi sow. Here we go. So, let's see, I think I'll go four to a cell. Little bit sprinkled over the top. And next.
about cutting you off with the, the last uh, lot of seeds I was planting. <coughs> um, unfortunately, my camera just shut itself off. Either the battery was flat or the card was full. Not really sure why, but anyway, it does that occasionally. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd bring you into the fernery and uh, we'll plant up this little pond thing, pond filter, with some of the, um, the mammoth melting snow peas. And I can see a locust on my tree, so hang on. So we'll start by getting rid of some of these old lettuces. They've done their purpose now. And I may even plant these out in the garden where they can grow on. And uh, make more lettuce. My celery needs tying up, so I need to wrap it actually, and by wrapping it, it will uh, grow larger stalks, fatter, uh, juicier, and um, it'll be milder tasting but um, it won't have that real strong celery taste which is what you're used to getting into the supermarkets anyway so I just pull it up like that like you're going to give it a haircut and just twist it off a bit Give it a little bit of room to grow. There we go. And um, when I get a chance, I'll come in with something and wrap it, rewrap it uh, for it ready to blanch. Now. I've got one of these, so we'll see if it fits. There we go. No problem. Oh my God. Mosquitoes are well and truly out. Now we'll throw some seed in there. I think we'll put two or three per uh, rung there. I'll just push them in. I'll leave the filter off for a few days. That'll give the um, sand in there time to drain out a bit so that the seeds don't rot before they germinate.
I've got a few more there, so I've got another. Uh, yeah, I've got another one over there, so I might plant the rest of these over. Right, that's all them paint, um, planted out. And there we go. The celery's all wrapped up. Ready for self-blanching. And as I said, that'll just make a, a larger, sweeter celery stalks ready for this winter's soups. Well, now I'm back under the patio. So what I'm doing is I'm planting up my kitchen herbs um, in these nice grey pots and they will be going on a uh, plant stand that I have just over there. I'll show you in a few minutes. And I've uh, picked all grey pots, so it's nice and uniform. And what I have, these pots have got rubber bungs in the bottom. And I thought I would make sort of a wicking pot out of them. Unfortunately, they're just going to have to sit in water until they soak it up, but that's fine. Um, at the moment, when, uh, when I can get some sand, I will put some sand in the bottom there and put them on the sand and that way if the roots grow through, they're only going into sand anyway. But that will help lift them up a little bit as well as wicking up the moisture and also it will help to reduce mosquitoes. But at the moment, we'll just plant up the pots and put them in this container and others very much like it. So what I thought I would start with, I have some variegated thyme, which is a beautiful little plant. I grab the variegated varieties not only for their flavour and their scent but also because I thought that they would be something a little different and pretty as well. So we'll repot this one up into a bigger pot. Um, So what I have here is just a mixture of potting mix, a little bit of sand and some um, worm casting. It's 
not much of it there. I'll have to make up some more as I go. But there's enough for this pot. So we'll stick some mixture in the bottom. Push that down in there. And there we go. This one's done. I'll bring you back when the other two are done. Right, so they're done. So the first one was, let's see, time. That's right. The second one I've decided on is oregano also a variegated plant so I think that'll be quite nice and then I've gone for just a straight green plant for the center which is good old basil so we'll pop him in the, the pot We'll sit down in the pot for a little while until I can get that sand. Now, next, I have a lemon balm. So I've got a nice uh, grey pot here for lemon balm. Yep, that should fit nicely. So, As you see, 
This one's more than ready to be planted out. It was sitting in that the uh, pond filter. And the next one is the Vena or oh, Lemon Verbena. This has a beautiful smell. I was thinking it might make a really nice cup of tea on a cold day. And there we go with the verbena now. What else have I got? I've got the rest of this to put out. I was actually thinking of using these. Now this is one of the melons I just took from my garden the other day. It's actually a champagne watermelon. It has a beautiful yellow flesh. So I thought I'll grow it in one of these and then all I have to do when I'm ready for it is just plant it straight in the ground and it's got plenty of moisture there from the rind. Um, it won't leak all over the place and when it's ready I can just plant it. So we'll pop that in there. Pop that in there. A little bit more worm castings because 
there a nice hungry little plant. I want to make sure it gets all the food it needs. And we'll just top up with some more potting mixture. There we go. And that one's done. It'll only need watering in a little bit later on. Now I've got another one here, so I'm going to do the same thing. Forgot it. This is well aged worm poo, so it won't hurt the plants at all. Well, it was at this point that um, I didn't know the camera had stopped filming. I had continued on with uh, planting a few more seeds and uh, then explained they were going into the hothouse and unfortunately I never got the aftershot of all the plants that I had planted in their pots but anyway I'll probably show you that on a follow-up video um, yeah so I also uh, missed the exit <laughs> of uh, this video so sorry about that um, anyway this is where I'm going to end this video I think it's been pretty long so I won't put you through any more suffering <laughs> anyway so if you like what I'm bringing you please think about giving me a thumbs up that would be really good and uh, if you like the content of what I'm bringing you please think about subscribing and if you do press that little bell on the top and you'll be notified whenever I put out a new video I can't grow this channel without your help and I really do appreciate your help. Anyway, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful Mother's Day for all you mothers out there. And spend some time out in the garden, get some sunshine and uh, enjoy your day. Anyway, bye for now. See ya.